Um, today, uh, we're going to be doing uh, a couple of things today. One, I'm going to be working with you on demonstrating um, the approach to the spinopalatine artery. And, uh, th you know, this is sort of something when, you know, before endoscopes existed, um, we talked about how to ligate the uh, spinopalatine artery. I'm going to talk about that. Then we're going to talk about the anterior ethmoid artery and see if we can l discover it using navigation along the, along the skull base here. And then we're going to do an external approach and we're going to show landmarking for where to make the incision uh, for an external approach to the uh, anterior ethmoid artery uh, as we come through here. And uh, we'll do that together. So let's start, let's start by sort of doing some anatomic assessment here, some osteology. So we can see this is already a nice uh, medial maxillectomy is done here. Uh, and then we've also, someone's uh, resected the middle third of the inferior turban here. And that's given us kind of a head start to the space. But this gives us a great view of the actual posterior wall of the maxillary sinus. And I think, you know, when I was training as a resident uh, and that the traditional approach to this would have been, you know, through a Caldwell look incision. And you would make your incision here, work your way back there, go through the maxilla. And then we would be told, you know, put your, get your microscope and then aim for anterior and medial to put your clips in here. And so the old approach was to crack open this shell back here. And you can see actually, okay, I don't know if you guys can see it on the video, but you can see where the artery is here in this case. You can actually see it's making its sort of very tortuous run from, from lateral, working its way through here, and then exiting here along the posterior wall. So we, when you do a sphenopalatine artery ligation, I always do make a very wide, uh, I do like to make a max rantrostomy so I can sort of landmark where are the back wall is, but it's not necessary. You know, and what is the indication for doing this? Well, I think for me, this is part of my approach for JNA surgery. If I have a, a larger one, I'll be working my way posteriorly, I'll take down the back wall of the maxilla, and I'll try and identify the artery laterally. But more importantly, I think you can use this as a tool if you have a severe posterior nasal bleed. I, I, one of my good friends from Denmark tells me in their country, every posterior nasal bleed is not done by IR, it's done by otolaryngology, where they'll do this posterior technique. And so you'll have a patient actively bleeding, take them to the OR, you'll remove the packing, and people go, oh, it's going to be too much blood. But it's actually not that bad when you have a... Uh, you have a so now we, we have our medial sort of aspect of our maxillary sinus there. We're going to just start sort of teasing the mucosa off of that. And there's a nice plane here that you can develop. Uh, and this was, we were really lucky because the inferior tube was missing. But we're going to sort of push that back and see if we can create that plane. And my landmark for here is if I didn't have the maxillary sinus off, I'm going to look at the stump of the middle turbinate right here. There tends to be the location of the exit is right in this area here. And there also is often like a little crista, a little bony prominence that hides that. Let's see if that happens in this case here. So we're going to start aiming on this flap. I'm looking at the middle turbinate again. Remember, this is our landmark right here. And we're going to start working our way backwards. And let's see if we find that crista here. And it, 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 will it show itself? And there, there up here, you see there it is. There is a little crista right here. Oh, there it is. I hope you guys can see that. Here, let me open that up a bit more, get rid of some of this soft tissue. And there is a little clue here. And now let's look back at the sinus. Remember we were talking about the superior medial aspect of the back wall of the maxillary sinus is a good landmark for the sphenopalatine artery. And look, that crista is here. So let's see if we find that behind that. Will it be sitting there? And sure enough, there it is. Just very reliably. Here's that little prominent of bone. And behind that, we'll find that sphenopalatine artery ligate, like right there in position. Now, what do you do once you've found it? Well, you have tons of options here. You could use monopolar. I don't love that. My favorite is using bipolar in here. But you can also use clips. And if you want to use a clip, let me have a, a ball, single ball tip seeker. Do you mind passing me that uh, ball tip seeker there, Greg? The max ray one. I love the ball tip seeker to kind of tease away some of this uh, soft tissue here. It's a nice, gentle device that you can use to sort of uh, develop a plane circumferentially around here. Because some of you may have endoscopic click access. And so here I am sort of working that up. And then the other thing you can do is just take that off. Let's get that keras in here, Greg. Let's see if we have a keras in here that we can, uh, yeah, there it is, a nice one millimeter. And then that, if we, we take that off, that should give us a very nice uh, exposure to that. So we'll just take the keras in, upbiting. You know, and you can just take that. You know, this is the same sort of approach we'll do for a sphenopalatine artery once we got that um, uh, for, for JNA. And you could just take the whole back wall off your fun if you want to. If you want to really have fun, just take the whole back wall off and find that. But here we can see now the artery, you see it doesn't tear very easily. It has a pretty good 
kind of robust nature to it. Let me get back to that. And then, so if you have a clip. Sure. So I'm going to just do uh, just some more fun here. We'll just take all this off here uh, just to really show you where the artery goes. But I'm going to try and just get a little more isolated here. So dissect it, circle. There you can sort of work your way. I'm hoping to get all the way around without tearing it. Let's see. Uh, okay, well, let's, uh, let me have a straight through cut here. If we happen to have one, yeah. And we'll just, great, yeah. Yeah, and then we can just sort of munch off. Now I've got my approach. Let's munch off some of this stuff we don't really need. Uh, we'll be a little bit aggressive here, even though maybe in real life we wouldn't be, but we'll be a little bit aggressive here. Which side? And now this bone, this is one of the buttresses. You know, you hear about these terms, the buttresses of the sinus. So this is the posterior medial aspect. This bone tends to be very hard here. This is the pterygo maxillary buttress of the maxillary sinus. And this tends to be, see, it's pretty hard. I can't quite get that there. So I will, in some cases, use a drill. But let me just do this for fun. Let's use the... Uh, you want to make, you want to expose the whole the PPF? You want to do that? Yeah, it's just going to take a while because it's so firm, right? Yeah. So let's just do EEA. I think that's really good. We don't have a clip to put on it. Yeah. yeah. So that's, I think it gives you an extra. Okay, so that's what you guys can do in the lab. Find that. If you have fun, I'm not going to, you guys know how to do this. Just drill that back down. And you can see the artery and, and, and trace it out laterally. We have, just for fun, let me see the kerosene because maybe I could just do it real quick with the kerosene. Maybe, maybe not. The kerosene tends to be a bit more aggressive. So if I just trace the artery here laterally, maybe I can just. This, here it is. You can see you can just sort of trace it out laterally here. And that's kind of fun. Okay, so you get the picture, guys. Just uh, come down there and then find the artery. You'll find that crystal, nick that off, find the artery, and then you can trace it out laterally for, uh, for fun. Now, let's talk about the anterior ethmoid artery. What we'd like you to do is actually see if you can identify it first endoscopically. And, you know, you'll see after you've done your total, you know, this is, someone's done a nice job here, we're doing anterior ethmoidectomy, very few cells, but you're kind of wondering, well, where is that anterior ethmoid artery? You know, it's going to be up superior here, but the navigation can often help you because there tends to be what we call a, a teardrop sign. And here's actually, I think this is the artery here crossing over, and I'm using navigation. If you look at the, uh, I, I'm not sure if the navigation is on the screen right now, but you can see at the very superior medial aspect of the orbit, there's almost like a little teardrop, like a little pinch, like a little, a little and that, and that is, can be your clue. See, if I move forward here, it's gone. If I move back, it's, it's gone again. But if I get a little bit closer to it here, it seems to sort of show itself. So I have my suspicion that's where it is. But now I want to, so let's have a, suppose you have a really bad bleed and you can't control that. Well, then you're going to do an external approach. And this is not a very common thing. This approach I use more often for uh, orbital apps, like uh, for a periorbital apps, like a, a, a Chandler 3 or, you know, or something pretty bad. But I'll, uh, the landmark for this is you use your thumb to just push on the orbit, and then I use my, my nail to kind of put a mark in there. And you know, hopefully you guys can see, I've left a nice little thumbnail mark in there. And then after I've done that, then I'll make an incision. Now, what I was gonna say is like, I'm gonna do this as a, a linear incision here today, just to sort of um, give you your approach. But here's my thumbnail mark right here. But in real life, I make a zigzag incision. So I do a W incision here. So I'll, I'll make an incision going this way, that way, that way. And why do I do that? Because I don't want to end up with a, 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 a stricture here. If I do a linear incision here, there's a risk of stricture. But, so, but I'm going to do a W incision. So when I'm doing the surgery in kids, I'll make, a, I'll make a dot here, a dot here, a dot here, a dot here, a dot here. And I make a W incision. And that gives me a lower chance of having a, a post op stricture. So in this case, let's see if I can just quickly use this knife to work my way down through that where I made that thumbprint. And sure enough, I'm able to do that. He's this uh, sort of older fella. I'm going to be generous with my incision here just so that we can um, move along in a good pace here. So, uh, and then I'll take the scissors in a second here. Let's see here. How am I doing? Pretty good. Generous incision here. In real life, I'd be scared right now. That's good. But that gives us a good view there. Now, there's going to be some fat in that location. And um, you're going to hold that and scope for me? Thank you. That'd be great. Thank you. Let's see if you can see that while I'm doing that. And um, yeah. you can, so you'll see. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Can you hold, can you hold it just like this? Yeah. 
If, uh, thanks, Ari, for holding this for me. This is great. Thank you. What am I doing for time, okay? Am I over time? Or? Okay, so I'll rush here. All right, so we're going to just uh, work our way onto the bone here. This is a few spreads, and we should be there. You can see the bone there quite nicely here. And then once we've got that, we can kind of tunnel our way um, into the periosteum. Let's see, am I doing here? Good. And this is a good place to use the caudal. Let's get the caudal right there, yeah. You know, you can just do this endoscopically for fun, but let's see if I can find that plane I created there. I find the plane, uh, I like the endoscope, and then I, when I get a big enough pocket, I put it in. Arif here is saying that he, he does this endoscopically no, once, he's, once he's made incision and worked his way down, which seems quite reasonable here. Let's see here. So I extend my incision superior uh, kind of laterally just because it makes this thing spring open. Yours is pretty good. Yeah, nice. Beautiful. Okay, let's see if I get, there's some, there's sometimes a suture line here between the frontal bone that we have to, I'm not quite on the right plane, am I here? Are we, can we get a little bit closer with the endoscope there? Thanks, friend. Okay, we're getting a little more good stuff here. Now, as I get to this plane, there's some fibers sometimes that will give you a little hard time here because of the suture lines that are here. And then, well, so we, this is also an approach you can do for anterior ethmoidectomy too. Remember the old external approaches for anterior ethmoid? No. It's not given. Shine the light in and you can look there if it helps. But I'll just put you here and then you should be good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thanks. Okay, okay good. So now focus it in there. Yeah, that's good. All right. Good. Thank you. So let's see if we can uh, keep going here. And uh, as you make your way, you'll find sometimes a suture line Liquid superiorly. Process. Remember the uh, the orbit's here, but remember as we saw in the navigation, the artery's going to be up higher. Let's see if we can identify it here as we head back. Oh, there we go. Is that it right there? Yeah. Yeah, so now we've got a good plane there. Yeah, that looks like we found it here. So let's go with the navigation here and let's look and see what we got. Yeah, sure enough, that's just where we saw it on the other the view there. So it looks just right where, where that teardrop is. And then, yeah, we're going to cut it for fun. And then let's see if we can find the posterior one, too. So here we're going to cut this now, intentionally. We're not going to, we're, we might, instead of cutting it, we're going to gnaw it. It's a Fisher Price scissors for you. It's like, <laughs> that's awesome. Great. No, no, the guard, the guard is, okay. let's, uh, let's try one more time with the scissors. I can probably, yeah, there you go. Some perioral fat there. There it goes. Okay, now you can see the artery now is pushed in half. Let's go back with the caudal and see if we can work our way a little further to the to the next one. So, so that was the anterior we've gone through. A little before we were fat showing here. It should be, remember it's 24 millimeters. Let's see if we go further back here while we find the posterior. And um, there it is. And there's the posterior artery coming in right there. Okay. Perfect, thank you so much. Okay, great. Very nice. Thank you guys.